Imagine you have a couple that didn't have children for many, many, many years. You can imagine that sal that they're having. They went to all the doctors, different hospitals. They went to all the rabbis trying to get brachot. Finally, years later down the line after they got married, the doctor told them, Oh Hashem, you're going to have a baby. You can imagine the simcha, the happiness that the couple is having. Every month goes by, they're looking forward to the baby, they're looking forward, they're getting ready. Finally comes to due date, they go to the hospital. The wife gets rushed inside the emergency room and the husband is waiting and waiting. The Bezat Hashem to hear the good news. He's sitting outside the room and he starts hearing commotion. He starts hearing screaming. The, doc- the doctors, the nurses are running back and forth, back and forth. They come to him and tell him, Listen, we have good news and we have bad news. The good news is, your wife can have the baby. But the bad news is, either she passes away and the baby comes out safely, or the baby is not going to come out safely, but the mother will. What do you want to do? You have to think quick. You can imagine the tzar, Rabbi imagine the pain. And he says, listen, I can't make the decision on myself. I have to ask my wife herself. And she's still capable of answering this question. She said, yes, run. He goes to his wife, you can imagine the pain, Rabbi imagine the pain. The wife is sitting there and he tells her, this is the choice that we have, either you or the baby. I'm not making that decision, you're going to make that decision. And she says, of course, take me and let the child come out. For years and years and years, we waited for this, for this. Take me as long as we have the baby. And that's what happened, Rabbi The mother passed away and they had a baby. Years go by, the father took care of the son very hard, obviously, without a mother. But he did it. He pulled through another year, another year, another year. Finally comes the bar mitzvah of this boy. The bar mitzvah. They make a huge bar mitzvah party. All the family members come, and of course it's hard without the mother. The father turns to the son 13 years later, and tells him, now that you're 13, you can say Kaddish. The tefillah that we say over a parent that passes away. And that elevates him in Shemaim to a higher and higher place in Gan Eden. So he tells his son, your mother gave up her life for you. I'm sure you were waiting for this day to say Kaddish now that you're bar mitzvah. And he, the son takes a siddur and he starts saying Kaddish and he flies by, like, duh, 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 just flies through it. His father looks at him in shock and he says, 13 years, your mother gave up her life for you. Finally, you could say Kaddish, you could give her something back, give her something back. And you just fly through the Kaddish with no emotions, no connection, no love to your mother. And the son answers to his father, I never met her. Did I meet her? I know who she is. It was nice of her, I hear that, but I never met her. What do you want from me? So when this Holocaust survivor said it, he was crying. He was saying it with tears. He said, can you imagine the tzar of the family and the father? How can you say such a thing like that? How do you do such a thing like that? Your mother gave her life for you. She sacrificed herself for you to be alive. A Kaddish, you can't give back. So this Holocaust returned to us. And he told us like this. He says, Abutai, Kalei said went through a lot of pain. A lot. People die for being Jewish. What does it mean to die for being Jewish? For what? It means to go to the mall, to chas shalom date non-Jews? What does it mean? To go to a non-kosher uh, uh, food store? To be in our phones 24-7 on Shabbat, seeing not good things, not keeping Shabbat? What does it mean to die for being Jewish? It means they put their lives on the line to keep the words of the Torah. Every single word of the Torah. They died for it. Why? In order for the next generations to keep on going. How could it be that a person right now, this generation, without realizing, good, good Jews, without realizing, turn back and say, eh, I don't need this anymore. Right now I can get whatever I want. You can shop at everything on Amazon. The world is... There's so much access to so many things. There's so much fun things. We are the smartest generation. Who needs the old school stuff? Enough of this Jewish business. Enough, enough. It's too much. I don't want it. How dare you, says this Halakha survivor. After so many years of Misirut Nefesh, they died for you to be Jewish. And just for a little nerdy steak sandwich with cheese, or a little party here and there in the club, it's worth it to throw out the whole Judaism for so many years?